Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're talking all about home bars. And if you love them, I'm gonna show you how to get a designer look regardless of the size of your space and the size of your bar. Because we are jumping deep into the world of drinking at home. <laughs> and now, for all of you guys with small spaces, hang on till the end because I've got some tips that are just for you guys. Now let's dive right in. Guys, there's three types of bars that I'm going to be talking about today. The first one is your built-in. Got a counter, people can sit at it, back counter, shelves, all that. Second one is a walk up. Now that's typically no seating area space. You can walk straight up to it, often found in a butler's pantry or something like that. Sometimes they're even dry, which means they have no plumbing. And then the third type that we're talking about is bar as furniture. Ooh, that's a fun one because it's got cabinets, it's got bar carts, it can do shelving. There's all kinds of things that we can do with that. So here we go. First up are the top 10 tips for a full-on wet bar that you would be building in to your space, or perhaps you already have one in a place you're in. So usually these types of bars are located away from the kitchen. So they're sometimes in the great room or between the living and dining spaces, somewhere in that area. And you definitely wanna have some very basics covered to make sure that that bar functions as a full bar away from the kitchen. So number one is you want a back bar, counter, and a front serving counter, which is a seated space, etc. Number two, you always want them plumbed and you want a nice deep sink. You can have it larger or you can have it smaller. I've done all shapes, doesn't matter. Number three, you're gonna need circulation space of about a meter or 36 inches between your back bar and the front counter. So you gotta build that in. Of course, number four, refrigeration. You gotta have that for sure. Under counter is usually best. Um, and I like to make sure that if you've got the room, you can also do a separate freezer or like an ice maker so that you're not traipsing back and forth to get ice. That's a key thing. Number five is of course the cabinets and you know tall drawers for liquor storage and things like that. Six, something people forget about a lot is enclosed trash and recycling. Because when you're making cocktails, there's lots of fruit rinds and stuff that ends up going into the garbage. So you wanna make sure that you've got that right there. You don't have to traipse around for that. Of course, you need shelves. Number seven is shelves for liquor. And those can be so fun and decorative. They can really be a feature element or they can be something much quieter. You also need drawers for tools and kind of glass storage. So some of the glasses may be displayed, but some of them may be in pull out drawers, which just makes it easier for you. You also need linen storage because you're using bar tools, things like that. Number nine is task lighting because believe it or not, you're in there and you're chopping away at things and you wanna be able to see what you're doing. So it is a working space. And then of course you want decorative lighting because everybody wants to look sexy and groovy at your bar. So you've definitely gotta get some cool, groovy, decorative lighting happening. And number 10 is a little bit on the optional side, but if you've got the room, I always put them in, which is considering one of the small drawer glass dishwashers. Because if your location is far from the kitchen, you're gonna be hauling those glasses back and forth. And you know, you've had a couple of drinks, who wants to do that? It's gonna end up as a big mess. So now those are the components that you wanna get into your bar. But what about kind of your style statement? Well, the great thing about that is that the bar can absolutely 100% reflect your style, regardless of whether it's minimalist contemporary, like I love this one that's just the cool clean arch with like a plaster wall behind it and simple backlighting, or if you're boho maximalist and you wanna go all the way to the other end, oh my God, this one with the mirror on the back wall that reflects the emerald lacquered ceiling, oh my God, that is an exquisite space. Or perhaps if you're a little bit more kind of, you know, farmhouse in that area, I love this one with the Windsor back seat bar stools. Those are great in the little beams so they can totally express your style. The things that you wanna make sure that you include are things like mirror, always good, underlit shelves. I like them underlit, backlit, uplit. 
any way you can get some cool LED lighting going on, you, know, you can see that it really enhances spaces when you're using them. Down lights, pin lights that are coming from the soffits or from the ceiling, those are super useful to kind of make things pop and sparkle a little bit. And then of course, you want real countertops. So you need either stone or quartz or something like that because it's akin to a kitchen. A lot of bars use a lot of citrus. And so there's so much liquid that you know, citrus tears up anything else except for really inert surfaces like stone or quartz or things like that. So guys, this is a bar I'm working on right now. And this is a perfect example with the back wall covered in mirror. And then what I did was I both uplit and underlit shelves that have a wood frame around them and then a glass center. So the light travels in both directions. So it both uplights the amber colors of the liquors as well as down lights and hits the glass. So this is going to be beautiful when it's done. Now, next up is the walk-up bar. Now, these are great and so many people really have these as opposed to the full wet bars because you can stash them in all kinds of like sneak -a -doo little places like you know, an unused corner, even under the stairs. Take a look at that one. A closet maybe that you are underusing. Maybe you have a butler's pantry that you don't have a butler for, who knows? You can put them in a lot of different places and they can even kind of be just sort of as a backdrop closet. So they're really useful. Typically these are what are called dry bars, meaning that they don't have plumbing in them. But sometimes if it's not too far from maybe a bathroom or something and you wanted to add a sink, you can. You want to make a decision about it in terms of whether or not it's behind a closed door like these two guys that are in closets. Oh, they're so clever and they're such little surprises when you open the door. But if you're going to not put it in a closet and say leave it open like this gorgeous blue one with the open open shelves, that's fine, but you have to be mindful of how you're dressing and what you're putting on and in that bar because it's always out in front and always part of the room space. Now, there's four main things that you have to have with this kind of bar. You always have to have good lighting inside the space. So either down onto the countertop or you know up into the shelves or both. You want to make sure that you have shelves and glass storage right there, of course. You want, again, a good hard surface for cutting. Now, you're not necessarily going to have a sink, but if you are chopping on things, get a great looking chopping board or something like that. If you don't have a stone top, that'll work. And then you also want to make sure that you have a concealed trash receptacle. And that's the thing I see people forget a lot is that if you've got a base cabinet or something like that, get a little tiny, you know, trash receptacle that you can shove into that cabinet. And then that way you're not hauling all of the rinds and packaging, you know, back and forth to another room. Now, I love some of these solutions. They can go all over the map. They can totally kind of reflect your style or they can be even invisible. Like, you know, the ones that hide behind this closet door. I love this beautiful one behind the naughty alder wood doors and those doors slide out and telescope back in. That's a great look. Or this little tiny nook kind of right next to the entryway to another room. I love it. You open the door and the whole thing is this sort of lovely bright orange, which is gorgeous. Those are great. The other one that I found so exceptional was this one that was kind of wedged into the wall, but what they did was they made the closet doors really this gorgeous, sensuous wood sculpture. So it became a feature even when the doors are closed as well as when they're open. Or even this sweet one where it looks like it's in a little beach cottage or something and it's just wide open, but they've done a nice little decor piece and the two stainless refrigerators are right there in front underneath the counter. So that all looks very sort of inviting and I just walk up and make myself a Mai Tai no questions asked. I want to give a big shout out to all my new subscribers. I'm so glad you guys have joined the channel. It's going to be so much fun. And for those of you who haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and be sure and ring the bell because when you ring the bell, you get notified every time I post a new video or go live. And we're going to be doing a lot of that that's coming up. Next up, the most fun of all is bar as furniture. Oh, this one's so fun. And it's mostly what we're all dealing with who have rental properties or tight spaces or, you know, different types of spaces like that where you're not actually building something in. Now, 
This goes all over the map, right? We've got bar cabinets. Oh, I'm gonna show you some groovy ones. There, you can even do kind of a console as a bar top. Shelving, that's also an option. And of course, the classic, and my favorite, the bar cart. It's on wheels, it can go anywhere. So now, as you can see, there's tons of ways you can interpret this too. And there are some really great pieces out there. Like for instance, Pottery Barn as a line has built out this gorgeous collection of modular pieces. So you can literally do one piece or you can do like four or five. I mean, these are great. They're all modular and they all kind of plug in. It's fabulous. I also love the sort of glamorous, almost kind of deco statement to some of these other cabinets that are up on legs like that, which was the traditional style of bar cabinet. Gosh, these brass ones that open up and then they're like this enameled robin's egg blue inside. That is fabulous and so sexy. That would look great open or closed. You can just choose to do some console pieces. I love this sweet little one that's kind of a cornflower blue in this lovely kind of little transitional space, which is great. Here's one where they'd put it in a niche in the corner and they'd put in a plain wood console in and then above it, they built in some shelves. So it gives them a little extra storage and display space. Or you can even just go all out and just put it all on a bookshelf. And of course, the bar cart itself, you know, on wheels, there's hundreds of iterations. I love this little one that looks kind of like rattan. That's fabulous. The brass one. If you saw this video on where designers shop online, I give you some great resources to find some of the bar carts, but I'll also be linking some of these great pieces down below as well. Now, if you're dealing with a situation where your bar is exposed, like it's on a bar cart or some open shelvings, there's a couple of tips that you've got to remember about how it looks. Number one, keep your tallest liquor bottles towards the back and layer them down towards the front of the surface so that you have this stepped effect and it doesn't, you don't have this big mishmash of bottles sitting around. Number two, display one, two, or three style of glasses two of each that's plenty you don't need to go more all out than that maybe a wine glass or a champagne flute a neat cocktail glass or maybe something stemmed for a martini or something a little bit more fun those are all the ones you need you're done then three you need to display your tools as a little bit of a collection even if they're not right even if you bought your muddler from one place and your strainer from another place find a little cute basket or a nice little stainless container of some sort to put them all in so that they all look nice and organized and then don't forget a little bit of a decor piece like i love this beautiful piece it's an all white bar and they just plop this pretty little floral arrangement on that or this one that has the nice little artwork piece on it there's always a little piece of something that references the rest of your home and isn't specifically alcohol related but looks really nice and makes the piece look like a piece of furniture functioning thank god but furniture nonetheless now once you've decided what kind of cool and groovy bar that you're gonna set up for your home you're gonna need a couple of basics and those are things like you know your ice bucket and tongs your wine and spirit decanters maybe one of each cocktail tool set you know you gotta have the basics there shaker and a mixing glass there are some great ones out there and of course great glassware right but if you want to know how to set up a killer bar from scratch i have got the basic home essentials bar pdf going out to all of my email list this week so if you're already on it you're getting it but if you aren't on my email list, head down to lisaholt.com, make sure you sign up and you'll get your own PDF on how to set up the perfect bar for your home before the holidays. So now that you have the basics on how to set up your own bar at home, be sure and check out these videos, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.